So here are all the questions that we'll do in this one. I will split it up onto different pages um, just so we have more space. But let's just go see what we have here. So it's electrostatics, two small spheres of each of mass five grams. Okay, so they're giving us mass, five grams, five grams are arranged. Q1 has a charge of that, is suspended from a light, blah, 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 blah. It's always an inextensible string, blah, 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 ignore friction. Hello, hello. Okay, so then um, with a charge of minus two, they didn't say no friction, but you know, I'm just what they usually say. Um, with a charge of minus 2.5 is placed vertically below so that both charges are in a straight line. Both spheres come to equilibrium, meaning that there's, um, you know, the system is just stationary. When Q2 is three centimeters, ignore the effect of air friction. Okay, so first question says, calculate the number of electrons that were removed from Q1 to give it a positive charge of that. Let's just talk about that a little bit. Let's pretend once upon a time there was a charge called Q1. Now Q1 was not positive or negative. We would say that charge Q1 was a neutral fellow. Then one day there were some robbers and those robbers came to Q1 and they said, hey, bro, we know you got some protons and neutrons, but we know that you have equal amounts. That's why you're neutral. Okay, I'm really starting to feel cringy. Like I'm, I'm like one of those like channels that tries to make it overly entertaining. But you know when they try to make it overly entertaining, especially like when they try to make it fun for kids, but then it's like really cringy. So I'm gonna stop. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, okay, so what happens is that the robbers come, I'm just going to carry on, the robbers come and they steal the electron, so it loses that electron, it loses that electron, and it loses that electron. For example, now, electrons are negative, so when something gives away electrons, then what does it become? More positive, and that is why Q1 is positive. Okay, so that's, that, that, I just wanted to give you an idea of why is Q1 positive, when it gave away electrons. Okay, now they're saying, calculate how many electrons were given away. So we have a special formula for this, which goes like this. I don't know why the formula sheet had it a little bit skew, but it's meant to be like that. Now, this part here is the number of electrons. This is the charge that was transferred. And this is, um, this is usually actually a delta Q sometimes on some formula sheets, it's a delta Q. It's like, what was the change in the charge, okay? And then this is the charge of an electron, which is on our formula sheet. Let's go have a look. Okay, so here we can see there's a E, charge on electron, and it's negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Okay, so let's just write that down negative 1.6, we know electrons are negative. Okay, so what we can do then is we can go work out, um, what you gotta understand is that Q1 was originally neutral. What does that mean? It had a charge of zero Coulomb. Then all of a sudden, it has a charge of 4.5 times 10 to the minus nine. So that is the that is how much the charge changed by. So it changed by 4.5 times 10 to the negative nine. And remember that if they gave you this in different units like um, nanocoulomb, picocoulomb, microcoulomb, millicoulomb, you would need to have converted, okay? And then the charge of an electron is um, negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. The negative's not that important here because we're just trying to work out the number of electrons. Let's go ahead, calculate this now. And if you round that to, um, oh, it even says here, assume this sphere was neutral. Aha. So um, 2.81 times 10 to the power of 10 uh, electrons. And I know that some of you got a negative answer, but the negative's not actually important in that formula because we're just calculating the number of electrons, okay? You can't have a negative number of electrons as your answer. This one says, draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on Q1. Okay, this is quite a nice question. So um, we know that there's a rope, okay? So that's gonna cause some type of tension force. We know that it's got mass. Remember they told us it's got five grams of mass. So it's gonna have its own gravity acting down. You could say FG or W. And then this, 
and this are going to be attracting each other because of Newton, uh, not Newton, Coulomb's law, where we have electrostatic charges, they will attract or repel depending on the charges. So look at this one over here at the bottom, it's negative, and then this one over here is positive. So they are going to attract, so you've got to think carefully, what is this one going to do to that one? Well, if it's attracting, it's going to pull it downwards. So we can say, we can pull it downwards like that. And we can call it Fe, which means the force of the electrostatic attraction or the electrostatic force between them. Okay, and so those are the forces acting on Q1. So to draw a label free body diagram, we have one, two, three forces. Okay, excellent. State Coulomb's law. So before we state the definition, let's write out the formula. So if Coulomb's law is almost like Newton's law of gravity, we just replace the Q's, I mean the M's with Q's, uh, and then everything else is the same. So state Coulomb's law. So it says that the, the electrostatic force between charges would be direct. Now, obviously, these aren't the exact word for it. I'm going to get that now, but I'm just showing you that the formula gives us a good help. Um, what is a good help? So the electrostatic force between two charges is directly proportional to the product of their charge and inversely, because it's at the bottom, proportional to the square of the distance between their centers. To the square of the distance between them. We don't really say distance between their centers because these electrostatic charges or, or spheres um, that we are looking at, they are so small that it doesn't even make sense to mention their centers because whether you are looking at the distance, um, so, so, so whether you are looking at the distance from uh, there to there, or if you were looking at the distance from center to center, it's going to be the same because these things are so tiny. So we don't worry about the radius and the centers. We just say the distance between them. Okay, um, right. So let's go actually get the formal definition now. And so here it tells us that the magnitude of the electrostatic force between um, exerted by two point charges on each other is directly proportional to the product of the magnitudes of their charges okay, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. Okay, so the formula gives you a very good indicator or it helps you to remember uh, the definition. This question says, calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. Okay, so we had a free body diagram on Q1 already. Let's go get that. So here is that free body diagram that we did in one of the earlier questions. So now they want us to calculate the magnitude of the tension, okay? Remember that each of these spheres has a mass of five grams, so it will be really easy to calculate this part, but now we need to think about how to calculate that part, which is the electrostatic force between these two objects. Well, that'll be easy. Newton's, um, not Newton, I keep saying that, Coulomb's law, which is K Q1 Q2 over R squared. We know the distance between them, we know what each of their charges are, and K is a constant on the formula sheet. So let's go calculate that. So we know that um, K is nine times 10 to the nine. Q1, it can be 4.5 times 10 to the negative nine. Remember in this formula, you don't have to put the negative, and so that'll be 2.5 times 10 to the negative nine. And then the distance, be careful, must be in meters. So you're gonna divide that with 100, which is 0 0.03 meters, okay? So 0 0.03, remember to square it. And if we work this out, don't round off yet, we get 1.125 times 10 to the negative four Newtons. Okay, so we have this one. And so now what we can go and do is we could use um, F net equals to MA. Okay, let's write this a little bit higher up, F net equals to MA, and we are told that the system was at equilibrium, so that means the system's pretty much not moving, so there's no acceleration, so we could say that F net is equal to M times zero, which then means that F net is zero, okay? Let's choose up as positive, and so that means you're gonna say tension minus Fe, because it's going down, minus Fg, because that's also going down, equals to zero. If you take the Fe plus the Fg to the other, or the Fg to the other side, it becomes like that. And so the tension is equal to the electrostatic force, which is 1.125 times 10 to the negative four 
plus the FG, which is mass times gravity, but the mass is in grams. So you're first gonna say um, divide by a thousand, which is um, 0 0.005. So 0 0.005 multiplied by 9.8. Okay, and if you had to go work this out, 0 0.049 newtons.